Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over how to add a fully refractive shockwave in the Blender game engine. So if I press P here in my scene, we get a nice warped almost uh, circle that goes and warps the air around it. So it has a nice shockwave effect. So that's what we're going to be learning how to do today. So without further ado, let's get started. Up the top here, go new or open up Blender if you don't already have it open. Then up the top here, change it to Blender Game, GeoSL, and an animation frame rate of 60. Then here, we're going to press X and delete the cube, then Shift A, and here we'll add a circle. Then I'm going to press Numpad 7 to go into Top View, then I'm going to press Tab and go to Edit Mode. Now, if you're not quite sure what you just saw, this uh, Pie Selection menu, what you can do now, if you have Blender 2.72 or above, you can go up here to use your preferences, go to the add-ons, search up Pi, and then there we go, Pi Menus Official. But anyway, that's just so you guys know where this Pi menu is from. So the next thing that I'm going to do is press Numpad 7 to go into Top View, and then I'm going to move my cursor here back to the center, so Shift S cursor to center, then with my circle selected I'm going to press tab, go to edit mode, and then with all the vertices selected I'm going to press numpad 7, go to top view, and press E to extrude, and press S to scale. And I'm going to scale it all the way out here roughly. Then I'm going to press Z, and just go to solid, and then here with my extruded ring I'm going to press Control R and scroll up once so we have two loop cuts then click and click again to confirm so double click and then what I'm going to do is pull this up like so and then I'm going to press A to deselect then hold down ALT and select the surrounding ring and push it down a bit then S to scale and push it down a little bit okay so something like that then this inner ring, this one here, I'm going to hold down ALT, the ALT key, and then oh, hold down the ALT key and then select this ring, like so. Then we're going to press S as well and scale it in a bit. Okay, so something like that. Then I'm going to press TAB and go back to object mode. Now what I'm going to do is press Z and select shade smooth, like that. And then what we're going to do is over here, we're going to go ahead and give it a material. Now this material we'll just call Refract. Then I'll also turn on Shadeless. And then over here we're going to give it a new texture. And also if you're in 2.72, by default when you add a texture in the game engine it just switches to Image or Movie. So if that's not for you, you have to select Image or Movie. There we go. And then what we want to do is click New. So we add a new image, and then here, um, let's just call it Refract. And the reason we need this is just to line up our coordinates so we have this nicely spaced out. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up a new window just by hovering there and dragging UV Image Editor, and then I'm going to press Numpad 7 to go into Top View, press Tab, and go to Edit Mode then A to deselect, A to select everything, and then U, and project from view. There we go, and that will project it out like that. Then here we can select our refract image, and we're going to change the source to, oh, not that, here, change it to UV grid, so we can see the coordinates. Then also I'm going to press Z, and go to textured, otherwise here you can just choose textured there. Right, so we can sort of see what it's going to look like. I'm going to press numpad 7, and in this window here, I'm going to press S to scale. And we want it fairly large, but not too large, so maybe something around that. Now what we want to do is select this middle ring. So hold down Alt and click on 1, then S to scale, and we want to scale it in a bit. There we go, something like that. Then what we want to do is we want to squish the edges here. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click this ring and then press S to scale. So then what I'm also going to do is select these inner two rings holding down ALT and then holding down SHIFT and ALT to select the second one and then S to scale again 
like that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is press tab, go back to object mode, and I'm going to give it a name. So just shockwave. Oh, and press enter. Then over here, I'm going to go to game logic. And then what I'm going to do is over here, add an always center, add a Python controller, and join the two together. Then I'm also going to set the always center on true. Now what we're going to do to make this work and warp the view of the player, what we're going to be using is the script from Tutorials for Blender 3D and we're going to be using a render to texture script. So a while ago I also did a tutorial on scopes and how to add gun scopes in the Blender game engine and this is also using the same script. So before I add the script what I'm going to do is add two properties to my shockwave. So the first one if you remember is, well both of them are string, but the first one is called material and the second one is called cam for camera. Now our material we have which is just called refract so we can plug that in right there. Then also what we need is a second camera or the refraction camera. Now I have tried using the normal default camera which the player sees through but this doesn't work and it makes our shockwave just turn out black so you have to have a second camera for this to work. So I'm going to click on my first camera, shift S, cursor to selected, shift A and add myself another camera and I'll scale it down a little bit so it fits the other one and then I'm going to press RZ to rotate it on the Z axes and we want to line them up fairly similar. Now an easy way to do this is press numpad 0 to go into this view and then just align it roughly by pressing G and I guess we can rotate by pressing R there we go it's very just now for our refraction camera we want it to be slightly warped or slightly zoomed in so you don't have to do this if you don't want to but I'm going to turn up the focal length to 40 oh 40 not 30 then what I'm going to then what I'm going to do is select my refraction camera and I'm going to in the object settings call it refract cam then on my shockwave I'm going to type in refract cam now if you're putting capitals in make sure you have the right ones on the shockwave okay so that is all of that done now we're going to copy and paste our script so down in the description below will be a link to a render to texture script for blender 2.5 and upwards so if you don't already have it go ahead and get that so if you already have the script then you can just go text and open text block and find it but otherwise you can make a new script here and we'll just call it refract and then you can get the script or download it, copy it and then paste it in. Okay, so just whatever works for you. But the next thing that we're going to do is in here, choose our refract script here. Uh, better put PY at the end. Anyway, we have those two set up. Then what I'm going to do is go to textured here. And if we've set it all up right, that should be working. So if I press 0 and press P. Oh, there we go. And it's blue. Now the reason it's blue is because it doesn't have any objects to look at and basically this world color here is rendered as blue on the shockwave. So we need to actually have some objects behind it to refract. So I'm going to have a plane first of all and I'm going to, what else am I going to do? I'm going to add myself maybe a cylinder over here, add a cone over here and then I'm going to give them some colors, maybe this one yellowy and this one can have a blue okay and then I'm also going to give the plane a texture so tab, U and unwrap then back to object mode give it a new material and give it a new texture, image or movie and just open up a random texture that works for you so maybe just this one here there we go something for it to refract around and so now if I press 0 and press P oh it's not showing up but we do have the cone and the cylinder slightly so the normals for this are the wrong way around so to fix that I'm gonna go tab go to edit mode 
open up this menu, go to UV and shading, and flip direction. So now it should be facing upwards. Then I'm going to go back to object mode, number at zero, and P, and there we go. It will have slightly refracted the texture around it. So one more thing we might add is to make the sides here a bit more squished. So I'm going to go back to UV image editor, select my shockwave, numpad 7, and then tab edit mode, A, select everything, and I'm just going to select this outer ring by holding down alt and clicking, and then I'm going to press S to scale, and I'm going to scale it out like that. As you can see here, it compresses the sides like so, and that will give us a bit nicer of an effect. Then what we might also do is actually reduce the radius of this, move it up a bit, and again, I'll select all of it and increase this radius so it's a bit more squished. Okay, so again, just lots of tweaking until you're happy with it. Also, one more thing, what you have to do is go into edit mode, go to UV and shading, and recalculate the normals, because they've also been flipped for some weird reason. So now if we go back to object mode and press P, then it looks a bit more refracted. Cool, so there is our shockwave, and that is basically how to make a shockwave in the Blender Game Engine. But we're not done here, because a shockwave doesn't sit still, does it? So what we're going to do is we're going to animate it. So here, open up a new window, timeline, move this up here, go to frame zero, scale it down a bit, then I, insert scaling, then maybe frame 60, one second, and scale it out, like that. And if you don't want to scale these sides, you can scale it down a bit. And then I'm going to press I and insert scaling. And so now on our shockwave, we're going to add a action, add another always sensor, and join this up to our action. There we go, here we'll add our shockwave action, ends at frame 60. And so now if we press P, there we go, we have a nice exploding shockwave that adds a pretty cool effect. However, if you want a shockwave like at the start, what we're going to have to do is spawn it in sideways and then expand it out. So to do that, what we're going to do is move this to layer 2, shift desk cursor to center, or add ourselves an empty to spawn it in, and if you want to, call the spawner, then when we press, let's just say spacebar, then when we press spacebar, we'll add in our shockwave, here, we'll choose shockwave, and we'll give it a time of 60. There we go. Now I'm going to move uh, both of my cameras. So you have to make sure you move them at the same time, otherwise you'll get weird results. And, oh, yep, there we go, something like that. That should be good. Move them back a bit. Okay, so just something like that, and now we press P, and now we're getting some proper shockwaves showing. Now if you notice, the background is still blue, at least in the shockwave, and that again is just due to the world color. So if you have a proper sky dome, then that shouldn't be a problem at all. Again, probably still a lot more tweaking. Um, I can imagine one more thing you'd want to do is, again, reduce the inner circle. So go to edit mode, select these two, scale them out a bit, then select the inner one, scale it out a bit, because by the time it reaches frame 60, it's already so large, so maybe something like that is a little better. Now to make sure this is always facing the player, we can add an edit object, and a track to, and we'll just track to the camera of the player. And then add an and controller, join it up to the true always, and then join this up here, now down here on our edit object actuator, the track axes, if we go to layer 2, is actually the Z axes. So here we want to change this to Z. There we go, positive Z. And the like upwards, I'm guessing, is Y. So um, upwards, we change to Y. Okay, so now number 1, or just layer 1. Actually, no, top of the keyboard 1 to switch layers, and then numpad 0, P, 
And there we go. But anyway, there you go guys. That's how to add a refractive shockwave in the Blender game engine. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, or share. All of that stuff is greatly appreciated. Again, the link for the script will be down in the description below. Again, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.